Well, good morning. Marcel Marchoni and myself um, have the uh, joy to introduce you to our PIM system at Stilber Eltron. When did we get started? In 2017? Or it, it was actually 2018, yeah. This is when we started to introduce a new PIM and uh, about the project and what we've uh, built up is uh, what we'd like to report of now briefly on myself. My name is Patrick Stein. I am in IT at Stilbert Eltron, responsible for IT infrastructures, uh, interfaces, security, PIM, uh, our internet, our web pages, and everything that goes with it. Everything with the exception of SAP, I would normally say. And uh, my uh, and um, in within the context of Stiebel Eltron. I actually uh, um, had the task of introducing the PIM and DUM system. PIM and DUM are my uh, professional background, but uh, besides, for five years, I have looked at uh, a change in management in organizations, in teams, also as an HI pro uh, to coach. Uh, a few facts and figures on Stiebel Eltron. I think uh, by now uh, we're quite uh, well known. At Stiebel Eltron we have long believed that um, electricity is the only true source of energy. Electricity is available in unlimited uh, amounts, basically, and this is why for years we have already focused on electrical uh, appliances. Most people know us for the um, instantaneous water heater, the, the uh, undercounter one, classically, but actually we view ourselves as a heat pump manufacturer these days. Just briefly, we're over 5,000 employees, it's 5,700 now on a global scale. Last year, for the first time, generated sales uh, in excess of 1 billion and are still traditionally a family business. This is not a buzzword for us. Um, the two brothers, the Stiebel brothers, are actively involved, not in the management, but they can be seen on a regular basis. And uh, uh, the family business aspect of our business is very important to us. Uh, a few brands we have, then the, the core brand, of course, is Stiebel Eltron, uh, then Tierkalor, um, which is only operating on the German-speaking market in 2018. In Sweden, we acquired uh, the Talmia company. This is also a heat pump manufacturer. And in 2019, Zimmermann Lüftung with uh, its brands Provox and Ataros and Freudenberg. Well, we're almost 100 years old. Uh, this is uh, our uh, uh, founder, Dr. Theodor Stiebel, who invented the uh, ring immersion heater. Sounds trivial, but then um, people encountered the problem uh, with immersion heaters that there was no automatic uh, switching off feature. And this is why they caused fires on a regular basis. And he invented the first ring immersion heater that switches itself off. Whatever well, what actually formed the basis for the first uh, instantaneous water heaters. And since 22, um, since 1976, uh, we've produced uh, heat pumps. This still works. And they, these pumps do still exist and they still work. Heat pumps almost account for 60% of our sales these days. <laughs> Great trousers, eh? <laughs> And um, since uh, 2022, we've partnered with Borussia Dortmund. I personally, well, <laughs> well, if this chart had been read, <laughs> different uh, story. No, we're here in the Ruhr Valley, and I think that uh, uh, 
This is why we're a premium partner of Borussia Dortmund. But red is Union, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Our competitor, competitor, they're big Dortmund fans and they actually turned to Bayern München as a club to sponsor. Well, let's look at the production sites we run. We have one in Bangkok, Thailand, and in Jiangxin, in China, near Beijing. Then we have uh, four European sites, one up in Sweden, in Aveka, in Popra, in the Slovak Republic. This is located in the High Tatras, so very valuable in landscape ta uh, terms. And apart from that, um, the rest is located in Holzminden, Hameln, Freudenberg, in Germany. But established in Berlin, yes, that's true, established in Berlin. But there was a war in between, and this is why we had to leave Berlin. And the funny thing about it is that one of the first ring immersion heaters is still um, in the foyer. Did, did you know an immersion heater? Oh, oh yeah, many, many. <laughs> well, um, uh, now let's talk about why you've come. Uh, where do we come from? What is our background? Well, in 2003, we introduced uh, Mediando as a PIM system in order to produce a price catalog for the sales force in Germany. And this is really the PC with which we generated our price catalog until 2019. This thing was so well taken care of and it was only used for the price catalog. You can still see the little dongle there. <laughs> And how many pages did the price catalog have back then? I think 500 or 600 pages, something like it. Um, in 2003, in between template, this lasted until 2019. So whenever actually somebody pushed the dongle with an E, the price catalog production would have failed. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely outdated uh, Windows XP version, so really old. But I think uh, this is not the case in our company. I guess you find these things more frequently. These are the websites that uh, were produced on the basis of a PIM system. Um, on the right hand side, you had the uh, product uh, index. This was also based on PIM data, but it was not really a real proper interface. Uh, we actually tapped the uh, database twice a week and then we pushed it to the web. Pardon? Yes, flash, flash, yes, of course. Um, but this is a screenshot dated 2012. Um, back then, a flash was still, <laughs> even from the IT perspective, I'm so happy this is gone. The marketeers, of course, all see this differently. Well, uh, briefly on our system landscape in the uh, center, Mediando, the core piece. We already had SAP as our central ERP system and uh, the master data were pushed over and we had the loaded media port uh, via FTP interface to actually place images in the hot folder which were then imported to Mediando. Uh, print uh, was done with in between back then and then uh, somebody said tailor-made and this was then somehow attached to it. And this is still working today. And I do hope that over the next two months we will have uh, replaced it because nobody remembers how it really works. A big disaster. Websites, the topic. This was just a mirror of our database from the PIM system to the web, just mirrored. And the product data were just pushed over. Documents were really drawn up uh, manually. Well, um, were we looking for a new PIM system? Well, you saw one reason on the screenshot. <laughs> um, this was really mission critical what we did. But the Mediando system was uh, just a thought for Holzminden, the factory in Germany, because Mediando was only available in German, then not web-based uh, from Thailand. I couldn't allow anybody to access uh, or Citrix. It simply didn't work. And the aim uh, strategically was to get all of the product data from all factories in one PIM system. 
maybe on the uh, uh, headline why hybris or hybris um, for most of you will know um, for those who have um, uh, SAP the commerce cloud version 2 when we got started uh, um, then uh, of course uh, the hybris company had not been taken over by SAP but today it's the commerce system and the PIM system of SAP just as, as an add-on uh, important for us um, was uh, have it uh, browser to have it browser based in several languages and languages and easy interfaces and uh, easy access worldwide. We did a pitch with various providers. We had uh, seven or eight system providers, and Stiebe is an SAP company, and this is how we finally ended up with Hubris. Um, the system is not uh, operating on the cloud. It is uh, handled by the uh, computing center with the HANA database. And uh, we try to object going to the cloud, or refuse going to the cloud as long as possible. Why? Because it is a disaster price-wise. This is cheeky. This is impertinent what they're asking for, to be perfectly honest with you. This is the reason. And hubris could not be run outside the SAP landscape as, as a standalone solution. It has to be dovetailed. Well, it is an independent product, um, but this has now become a conglomerate cloud for customers, the name, and Hubris is only a small part. CRM is included, marketing cloud is included, typically SAP, they put everything together in one big solution, although you only need a little bit and you then uh, ask to pay a lot of money. We uh, cancelled it uh, the end of uh, 24, that uh, version was uh, cancelled. We said we'll, we'll leave it running. Well, you also have to mention that SAP Commerce, uh, that SAP focuses on commerce, but the PIM system is not really developed further. They're adding a few features here and there, but uh, in comparison with other PIM MDM providers, uh, uh, hubris is really lagging behind uh, as a PIM system, not, a, not as a commerce system though. We deliberately decided to not uh, uh, go for the uh, strongest PIM system, but we opted for the PIM conglomerate with the commerce system. Yeah, this would have been my question. Why hubris and uh, why SAP? So the USP uh, was missing, but you're now saying that this was the actual reason, and this is understandable, yeah, the conglomerate with the, with commerce. There are other PIM systems with other USPs available that would have been uh, more powerful. Yeah, they score points for different things. You have to weigh matters, that's true. We're now starting to roll out web shops where this is still in-house uh, developments, but it's a matter of time when we will switch over to a commerce system. So B2B web shop, that is. Yes, yes, this is only B2B. A very little part B2C for Tekalor, where you can order things, but 99.9% uh, .9 is B2B. Well, it depends on the market. Uh, we focus in Germany on wholesalers. Tekalor is uh, uh, skilled craftspeople, but most markets are, are, are two-stage, um, follow a two-pronged approach. Looking at the system landscape now, the difference is not so big. Um, the interfaces interfaces have been added. Um, first and foremost, the APRI database. This is uh, the EU database where manufacturers have to register their equipment with energy data. Honestly speaking, this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're also struggling with it. I can see that. Uh, interfaces, uh, uh, there's the EU, and when you think of the EU, then this this represents it all. To fill this database is is really a nightmare. Then, uh, in between, we changed over to the print commit. Um, so this is how we distribute price catalogs 
for 15 countries by now, I think. Then marketing brochures are distributed by the print committee. This is our central system by now. Why? What was the reason for you to change from in between to commit? Well, back then it was a recommendation uh, when they did the pitch. All providers said, guys, with your requirements, opt for the commit because this is the state of the art product and uh, in between can't cope with it. The same way we changed uh, from Lauda Media Po to Celum, because Lauda themselves said, what do you need? We can't deliver any longer. Uh, opt for Celum. They have a solution that can actually fulfill your requirements better. Uh, very important uh, for uh, wholesalers is uh, uh, data deliveries, the EBM BCAT uh, data with uh, uh, the help of SQLI media. And this is really working at the push of a button now. Uh, in the past, uh, people sat on this working for weeks, so now we simply push a button. And um, apart from structuring the data, our job uh, was uh, the interfaces. I want to cover one interface. I don't know who uses uh, SAP, Hubris and Salem because I know that many use this combination of products. Performance uh, was a topic. When you actually think 10 years back, you did not have to deliver data so frequently. Today, this is all at the push of a button far more frequently in the standard interface by Selum to Hubris. Uh, for 30,000 assets, the process took 72 hours. I would have said 60 hours. <laughs> and we've uh, reduce this with a new interface to one and a half hours. We pushed it r down. This is a main reason, apart from the fact uh, that you want to structure the data. Um, the system was developed in 2003 and uh, lots of things were attached, but uh, classification, categorization, these topics were, were really not in sight. And this is uh, what we introduced and this is uh, why Stiebel Elton is now in a completely different position to deliver data. But we <laughs> fell on our nose with the migration because the data classification actually uh, went wild back then. You had a question? the SAP Hubris. We also use Hubris as a cloud solution. Uh, what is the resources you need in-house to control this, to enrich this, enhance this for the web shop? In my team, I have one Hubris administrator. Then for data management, we have a PIM team now of uh, six or seven people who only manage data in the system. And of course, uh, we cooperate with SQLI very intensely um, than for system management. Uh, you mentioned templates. Uh, here, the focus is clearly on PIM. We work with the back office. This is not a template development in the sense uh, that uh, what you see in the web is Adobe with uh, some commerce components. This is not the commerce cloud yet. And so far, the comparison, how many people you really need to process this uh, is sort of lagging. Oh, we are also thinking uh, about um, a comment off the mic. You have a shop system, you have a website, and the customer is wondering, is this two c different companies or is this the same company? This is how things start. And then you have a third uh, QL and um, this is very complicated. And to, to really consolidate this and make it more consistent. But in Headless, um, this composable approach is possible. This is one of the reasons why we have not introduced the commerce system yet, because uh, the online marketing, um, we're fighting with these, how to do it properly. We always said, this is only a shop system. It's not a proper uh, front-end 
that you can actually use for customers? Well, in the past, uh, with the accelerator, you could do that. I don't want to talk about the time uh, consumed. You, you can put any CMS on top of it. Hmm. I think there was one question. The tool. Is this your tool? Yes. And you support several item versions? Yes, 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 we do. Well, we started with seven. We're now we're at nine now, right? Are they only mapped? No, in Hubris. The mapping is done in Hubris. Yes. Yes. And this is a back office by no adapted, adapted. Yeah, it's an adapted back office. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, can I see this? Do we have a screenshot? Well, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Should be possible to do. You said uh, a data managers. They're all in IT. No, no. They're in product management. <laughs> yes. In product management. Yes. Uh, it, it differs. If it's product data, it's product management. If it's marketing, um, then the marketing texts uh, you mean the uh, B2C texts? And you as a coach, I suppose. Yeah. The product manager who does th uh, such a thing, no, no, this is a specific team. Um, in the past, the product managers did this themselves, but now we have a dedicated team that only uh, manages the data for PM, and then the release comes through Hubris, but he is the PM is uh, in charge of uh, this segment. Comment of the mic. This was the uh, Celum uh, interface. We wanted to connect it via REST. Um, to stop actually mirroring or matching the data, then the images are actually exported at the same time. Well, if the performance is okay, because uh, this is what we do. We don't have direct access or live access uh, to the system. We mirror the data. We don't have a 24-7 system available on the one hand. We e uh, even have a separation. The website's in Hubris and the image is then pushed to the web server via REST. But this is only the metadata, not the active. Um, we're not pushing the assets, assets back and forth. No. The interface, no, 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 no. The problem was uh, uh, that the interface provided by Selum back then was a disaster, or is a disaster. Mm, I. Uh, they contained other logics and there were so many queries and uh, things they wanted to know and they flanged and attached everything they possibly could and this uh, then uh, brought down performance. The standard interface, I do not know whether it's still part of the uh, portfolio. Roxy, do you know the standard Celum uh, uh, Hubris interface is this still a part of the portfolio? No, no, no. This is the revised version. Uh, it's just as slow. Well, okay. Um, well, yes. Probably also interesting is the translations. We work with the Balthazar company and we deliver the data from Hubris and they actually push back the data and works very well now. Highly automated. Um, Question on the PID system. So the pro products are created in, um, we have uh, different PLM systems that we use. Products are uh, created in Windchill and uh, contacts and database. This is where the instruction manuals are saved, the product data sheets. This is where they're they generated. Uh, I d haven't understood why PLM goes via DAM. Yeah, then now I've understood. The cut data are saved in Windchill, or are generated in Windchill, rather. I think we can skip this one. Talked about this uh, sufficiently, exhaustively. <laughs> well, then, websites, um, just a screenshot. They have been modernized as well. 
because all websites are uh, actually supplied by Hubris. When you click products and solutions, then you will all get the data exported from our PIM system. The price catalog. In terms of structure, the original uh, structure was maintained, um, but we attached lots of things. What you see here, all of the icons, for instance, this is all information um, that are maintained in Hubris, uh, article by article, and the print system simply processes this information. Uh, especially in terms of the red dot award, you have to comply with the expiry dates, and this is all handled by Hubris, uh, where this data is saved. User experience, or host Huber said it, uh, the uh, stock cube uh, theme is clear. You were not uh, in the plenary, in the opening uh, speech, and this is why you don't know what uh, he meant with uh, stock cube. Storytelling, narratives, this is clearly reflected, is clearly not yet reflected in the look and feel of the product catalog, but in the complexity and the sheer volume of data. Everything is available here. Comment off the mic. Yes, please, can't understand you. Uh, how many products, how many pages? Oh, 800 or 900 pages, I think, and 15 countries. But of course, we also have multilingual countries such as uh, Switzerland or Belgium. And there uh, we have more than one language. And this is uh, centrally done by the print system via Hubris, also by the PIM team that actually maintains the data. They also produce the price catalogs centrally. On demand, or how many versions? Twice a year. Twice a year, there is one main version in uh, at the end of the year, and in the middle of the year, uh, middle of the year, there is an update. And in addition, there are marketing brochures and. Uh, in, uh, in Frankfurt for the big trade fair, there are many, many marketing brochures that were produced for the trade fair. Yes. Uh, how high is the automation level? The degree of uh, uh, automation is so high that we simply push a button and the catalog uh, drops out, so to speak. What is being set manually in InDesign is the the so-called decorative pages, as the marketeer said, the foreword by the CEO, for instance. But apart from that, uh, it's almost 100% uh, automation. And you do this uh, no, in InDesign, and then the pages, the decorative pages, are then uh, introduced via InDesign, because we're old school, we're still printing. And they send the original InDesign files to the printer, to the print shop, and uh, they uh, do then really print a catalog. 10 years uh, we had ago, ago, we had like roughly 40,000 copies, but we're down to 4,000 now. This is also fully automated? Yeah. Um, pagination, everything fully automated. Well then, I think I'm next. In terms of time, we're doing fine. Don't be afraid. Um, Stiebel Eltron is far more exciting, especially at our day and age with heat pumps. So just briefly on SQLI, we were named Uzudio. Now we form part of a uh, French parent company, SQLI. As a digital agency, we're quite a big shop with 2,300 people, all in all, who uh, work at our agency. What is so special about us? We offer the uh, complete or cover the, the complete cycle. We're a tech company that um, implements systems and looks at the data quality. We really try to pursue or focus on the strategic approach and um, and turn and based on a digital strategy, we try to solve customer excellence issues, PIM, MPM. Uh, this is our approach. 
and when you go full circle then you will see that all the way down to projects I was really grateful when you actually gave me this buzzword change management so all the way down to change management um, we actually cooperate with our customers and um, whoops and uh, we also have developed a framework and um, uh, where we um, uh, all of uh, all the services are mapped and where we show how we go about projects I thought about what to tell you of course uh, th this is all related to the project as such but I want to talk about change management because we're talking a lot about uh, products and data and PIM is above all processes when I introduce this um, you're often reduced to systems but PIM is uh, in, in organizational terms it's a highly emotional topic when we kicked off the project the ideas we had the lab people should maintain their own data we we all discarded this <laughs> very quickly and said okay we uh, employ one central team and they will manage the data for complete product management the teams uh, are of course international in Thailand we have people in China we have people who maintain their data direct this did not exist before me uh, with Mediander they all did what they wanted to felt like so let's look at the project organization as such um, people and change management are the focus here it looks a little different from um, uh, my Mac view when we look at the system architecture again um, uh, what do we see the complexity has increased substantially and it must be mastered by a team and this of course creates lots of questions questions that we ask ourselves in a company how we actually time exports perfectly etc pp I have listed a number of questions uh, that also exert pressure on teams and the uh, topic of uncertainty. We're uh, constantly learning new things, undergoing learning curves. In earlier days, there was one production deadline for a catalog. And what happens now if the system no longer works properly? Honestly, in the print catalog in uh, 2022, um, all of a sudden, uh, the hubris no longer managed. It no longer coped with the workload. There were too many wor uh, catalogs uh, uh, or generated in parallel in the print suite. And all of a sudden, the, the workload was too high on the hubris. But I'm not uh, referring to the technical aspect. How do we handle this? Who can I ask when something goes wrong? there's an image missing somebody says me in Selimit it's there in hubris uh, I can see the metadata but it's not exported to print it's not the technical issue it's simply the question how do I handle this who do I ask when such a problem shows up because you're under time pressure I need to uh, send it to the print shop it needs to be printed tomorrow and this complexity has substantially increased how do I handle new system requirements how do I develop them in parallel because there's not one system one media under one database there's a complex system that we're faced with that is even the elements are dovetailed projects uh, normally you do them once but when you listen and hear to all of the the complexity who has introduced 10 PIMs and says well I know what it what it works like who can say this nobody nobody you maybe um, nobody can uh, safely tell you um, how do we approach this now? when I got started in earlier days when I developed my first systems uh, we used to have 300 uh, page uh, concepts back then I mean they weren't worth the paper uh, because only 40% were correct when they left the printer how did we go about this project we took an agile approach we formed a joint collaborative team we had cycles we closely cooperated um, 
so that we're in we were in a constant exchange this is uh, in the old millennium and uh, uh, for half a year as a service provider you actually withdrew with uh, like a PWC and then you came up with the system and said wow there it is and then the customer tells you oh wanted to have a different thing in so far it is important to say that agile work is the only way whether it's scrum or another method makes no difference cooperate close Mostly, whether it's with a service provider or not, this is the only way to make progress. Although we have to say that we found this very difficult initially because we're not such an agile organization. We were classical and this is exactly the, the topic. Change doesn't happen overnight. This is rethinking. We're five years um, f f down the road and today agility is, is, is uh, an everyday buzzword. You cannot introduce agility by defining guardrails. No, um, such an agile system must be breathing and live. Let me give you an example. How much uh, work can I cope with in uh, uh, two weeks? Uh, how many stories can be developed by developers? In hindsight, they'd say, well, I'm being controlled. Well, uh, in the beginning, we were very cautious uh, um, relief, uh, releasing such data with the developers teams. Today, the developers ask for the figures after the sprint. So the mindset has changed completely. We want to know how or how much we've improved. They assume responsibility. My question, how did you succeed in actually uh, taking the management along? I guess that the employees understand faster than the management. The manager says, I have a project and three corner points per performance deadline costs. And then I say, well, I do uh, agile change management. And the manager says, but you haven't given me a timeline for the end and you can't even tell me how much it's gonna cost. And you don't even uh, tell me how much performance you can achieve. So there's is a contradiction in terms, isn't it? At the end of the day, the management must really drive this personally and must support it. Sorry, sorry, sir. May I may I ask for one thing, Patrick, that we just go through the charts. This is a highly interesting question that we're constantly faced with. But um, is it okay if we briefly finish the charts and then see how much time is left? And if there's not enough time, we'll probably have to do it bilaterally uh, outside. Um, I don't know. We we started a little later. Um, five minutes are left. Two minutes rather. Five, five. Yeah, but we started 10 minutes late. So, ah, oh, the others are waiting outside. Yeah, the, the coffee break is over anyway. Um, what is important to me, all system developers know the story definition. And this contributes to this triangle I mentioned before. Think in terms of benefits. Why am I doing it? What's in it for me? This is the only way how to convince, for instance, the management. But I can tell you from my own experience, even managers have started to understand this and they see um, that when they've introduced a waterfall model that it has taken another year or a year longer than expected. They've gone through the same experience, um, learning curve. And enrolling circles and to closely cooperate and again, uh, with IT, this one worked pretty speedily, but the product management had to be included. And you can't say, why don't they get the point? It simply takes time, uh, such change process. This is a change of mindset and you don't do this overnight. And just a brief example, just imagine um, you, you brush your teeth twice a day, I suppose so. And now my task is to do it three times a day. They're very simple. Yeah, then I have it uh, brushed uh, around lunchtime. Will you do this a whole year? So let me tell you small steps, close cooperation um, and uh, in the rolling cycle. So this is the important points. And I skipped this chart here. One of my favorite things is this when we think about change management 
Of course, uh, I can uh, but I can actually introduce a new technical bit or component, a circuit board, and then Patrick Stein runs 10 times as fast. Technical developments are very, really fast, but we as humans, we're not like that. We need our time. We don't work 10 times faster when just a bit is replaced. And this, since we all deal with people, it is so important to transfer this knowledge to teams, go one up to organizations. This is another level of complication. And there the impacts and the, in, in, yeah, uh, we didn't, we didn't the project by manifesto. We had a good mixture that we found that really works for us. And maybe uh, to comment on the context of this Congress here, um, we at SQLI, of course, uh, uh, focus on PIM and MDM. We followed the period system and we have the so-called house of PIM and we say exactly which uh, building block should be included. But the total view is important, agile methods. And uh, the, it goes one step further. If you ask, what is this? Some will know the iceberg model. And this also works for agility. 20% can be seen, but you know very well that an iceberg has this uh, bottom part. And I always picture what what I can't see, what's in me. Um, attitudes, fears, feelings. And we have to take time to cater to these as well. And this is part of a digital transformation project should always be the organizational change management. And if you want to approach me um, uh, to talk about the systemic view, uh, this is, was developed by uh, Zloman, the systemic view, um, customizing the message for people. So, so extremely important for the success of Ease project. Never lose sight of people and teams. What could that be? Our recommendation is to not only define targets or objectives, but to also define the star that you're following, the sense, the meaning behind all of this. Why am I doing this project? Leadership management, so important. I don't want to complain about management, but it is, of course, meaningful when a leader uh, endorses such uh, process. Uh, how do I deal with mistakes, communication and confidence, own responsibility? You often work in silos uh, and uh, working across departments uh, often fails because there's lots of silo think thinking and that has to do with this leadership and management. And at the end of the day, it is the project and the organizational culture. It was important to me to focus on this beyond PIM and data, to tell you there is something else, uh, something that is not yet really stressed by trade magazines, and I still find it very important. Three findings at the end. Agile, number one. The agile approach. This is one of the big success factors. Uh, man is not a machine. Give them time. And third finding, small changes can have a big impact. And never lose sight of your people and your teams. You obtain a better quality, you will work more efficiently, and your employees will be happy and satisfied and stay with you. And this is one of the most important points today. Well then, uh, there's still something in there that I hadn't seen before. Wrong. That was a mistake. Well, uh, approaches. Uh, I don't know, is anybody here of Werk 2? No. As long as nobody kicks us out. Ah, the next one's already waiting in line. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're... you're whipping us out. Well, we started 10 minutes late and so far. Well, thank you. Yeah.